So today we are talking about flat effect, and this is one of the reasons why people have like stiff faces, and it's kind of emotionless in a way. So when you're talking to someone, it might be a little harder. This might also be what some people refer to as the resting bee face. In the inside, you might be feeling happy, sad, excited, basically whatever. But on the outside, it feels like an absolute stone wall and so very motionless. So when other people sees, like I guess your face from the outside, they don't really know what's going on inside. And the reason that we're talking about this issue is that you know having a stiff face doesn't really help us talk to people or connect with others. So it's some ways that we need to take notice of this issue if you do have it, so that we can better be aware of our body language and be more conscious of doing this. And maybe you are already conscious of these things happening. And here, this is just going to provide a little more information on it too. Uh, if you're not subscribed yet, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and of course the bell. So just as a disclaimer, this, I am not a doctor because inside this explanation and video I'll be going through, there are some parts that are somewhat medically related. So if you are in need of any medical advice, please go see a doctor because these things can get a little sensitive, especially like with chemicals in our bodies and prescriptions and how you ought to handle certain procedures and protocols. And it's much safer when you are just visiting your own doctor that actually knows your condition. Don't want to self-diagnose and then misinterpret and then things go wrong. Okay, so here the basic outline that I'll be going through is first one is what exactly is it? And then the second part is how exactly does it happen? So first we're going to go over what exactly is it. But before even that, I want to touch on just something that I think it's good, um, just like a good approach to this particular issue, or pretty much most issues, is the fact that you do not want to lock in and misdiagnose yourself. Because I think it's very common for us to see something and to really apply to us and then feel really locked in to that option that we think it is and be emotionally attached. I don't know if you had a instance where you had a little cough and then you go online and you search on Google for all the symptoms you have and then you end up with cancer. And like, that's not really likely, but when you're looking online, you start to confirm everything in your mind and you see what you want to see. And then you look for all the worst possible scenarios and then suddenly you think you have something that you complain might not even be having. And we don't tell anyone about this. It's just inside our minds and we are freaking out and it does not help the situation because now you might be just uh, scared over something that has never ever happened or is even the wrong thing. So. Before going through this whole thing, I just want you to understand that this is one of the reasons why we want people to have a correct diagnosis. And if it's a severe condition, that's why we have doctors do it. Okay, so this is basically flat effect. Flat effect is a condition that causes people to not express emotions in the same way other people might. So in short, what this basically means is that you don't express the same amount of emotions as other people on the outside, especially with your face. And when you are trying to, let's say, like smile or feel sad or angry, it's, it's actually a lot of energy for you to like move that face, for you to kind of express that emotion. And it feels like your emotional intensity it's much smaller than other people. This might not be a perfect analogy, but I don't know why I keep thinking about like flat soda when I think when I'm talking about like flat effect, because it has almost like nothing related. But it in some ways it is kind of like that because like having a flat soda is a soda that has 
like just been sitting around for a good amount of time and it has lost all the carbonations inside the soda. But that carbonation is what makes the soda soda. And in a way, emotions in our lives is kind of like that carbonation. That it's very essential to that soda. So we have to find some ways to make sure that the carbonation is back into our lives so that we can actually be a nice tasting drink. Okay, that sounded kind of weird, but you understand what I'm saying in terms of the analogy. So now let's go into the different causes. And the truth is, there can be a variety of different causes for almost anything. So I am going to here try to cover the more common ones. And if I miss anything, yeah, just let me know where you feel like, oh, that doesn't, yeah, doesn't cover everything. Probably doesn't. But yeah, just let me know. The first one is you basically just haven't moved your face for a long time. Yeah, I know it sounds kind of weird, but it is like your face is really filled with muscles like this is muscle. So like the more you use it, the more you exercise it, then the more stronger it will be and you'll be more aware of the muscles presence. It's kind of like weightlifting. Whenever you're lifting more and more weights, like your body becomes stronger and you can see that your muscles are getting bigger and stronger. And in some way, your face is the same because the more you do have a chance to smile or to say something, then your face become more aware and it's more expressive of the things over time. But if you just haven't got a chance to actually show that expression or practice being in those situations and you moving those face muscles, then yeah, you will have a more stiff face because it's not regularly practiced. And the thing is, when you're getting back into like actually expressing your emotions, will you actually feel like you are expanding a lot of energy? Yeah, of course. Like when you are just starting out those few days when you exercise, I don't know if you like ran before after like not running for like a week. Like literally your legs are sore for like two, three days. I don't, I don't know if it's like that for everyone, but yeah, same thing with your face muscles. It will feel like a huge amount of effort to get back into uh, that state where you're naturally smiling. It almost has to be rebuilt like a habit. So I feel like that should be expected. The next set of causes are under the mental illness section. So this is why I mentioned a little bit before about like uh, if you need a doctor, then please consult your physician. And here, there are some of the ones that are more, I wouldn't say it's common, but some of the ones they listed are like depression, anxiety, schizophrenia, and bipolar, and then some other different range of things. But depression and anxiety, I can see because depression, you're really sad. You're feeling, well, not just so much sad, but it's almost like a feeling of losing a sense of motivation for doing things. And when you have that, of course you're not expressing any emotions. And you don't feel like there's an effort and a need and want to actually show who you are. Because life is just... Ugh. And for anxiety, in terms of like really afraid of judgment of people, sometimes we freeze up and we don't know what to do. So I can see that blank face, feeling stunned, and it's not exactly something that we want. It just, it just happens. So... I can also see how this can lead to a like a prolonged time when we don't have a chance to really show our emotions and it'd be harder to show emotions. But things like schizophrenia and bipolar, uh, honestly I don't have much takes on this. I have not dug deep into this kind of literature to actually explain the depth of what these things are. But yeah, I mean, you roughly know what they are as conditions, but there are several different, I guess, these uh, mental mentalities that you can look, kind of look out for if you are like having flat effects, like, oh, Mickey, maybe there is a different connection and then do some research and ask your doctor. The next set of causes are 
uh, anxiety and antidepressant medications. So this can cover a different range of things like tranquilizers and your um, pulse bars. Yeah, like there are different different categories for things that you take. And there are different researches that has been done, which they're kind of saying that if you do take uh, these medications, that they may lead to things like emotional blunting, which it makes your emotions feel a lot more dull and you don't feel as lively as before. So a lot of what these medications does is that there is a this pleasure pathway inside of your body. I'm not sure. It should be pretty well known by now. The ones that are dealing with serotonin, norepinephrine, and dopamine. And this is basically the pathways that you, leads to you feeling good about yourself or feeling more relaxed about like the condition this some the releasing of the chemicals that allows you to relax your physical state but when you're going around and kind of inserting different chemicals adding different components and kind of tricking your body into thinking that's happy when it's not some things become a little weird so this is why there are different side effects for all the different medications that you do have when you're looking at this, there is a reason why we study biology and chemistry in high school and in college. So you can see that right now, if you do under those th understand those things, pay attention, it is not completely useless when you get into some place where you actually want to understand what's going on and you, like what exactly do these medications do. So, but these things are sensitive, so you want to go and do extensive research by yourself and talk with professionals to kind of link that together before making any big decisions. So now that you understand most of the causes, what exactly do you do? And to be honest, the top priority is assessment. And as much as I want to say that there's something you can do by yourself, if it's more like mental condition related there's really not that much you can do if like the treatment itself and the source it's not something that you are capable of handling by yourself so there's no really quick way to go about doing this but if this is purely just a matter of expression of your emotion and that your face feels really stiff because you haven't used it for a long time then yeah, it's, you can do something about that. So two recommendations that I would have is, first one is massage your face. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like loosening up your muscles before you actually use them. So especially your facial muscles, press and massage. And to make sure that it's nice, loose, and you are aware of it, and you're kind of heating it up, so it's, uh, it's nice and ready and relaxed for you to do it. And the second one is, if you haven't used it for a long time, try looking at a mirror and seeing your face as you try to smile. Because sometimes we may think that we are smiling a lot, but how, how other people see us is that it's just a slight smile or smirk and you, they can't really tell. So the best way to go about gauging just how much of what, what you look on the outside versus what you're trying to do and your efforts a mirror is the best way to go about it because a slight smile might not be what you're going for or if you're smiling too big so the best way is to look at the mirror and it's not the time to be critical or be like oh this smile, smile doesn't look amazing or it doesn't look as good as other people's smiles this is the time to look and be like I just want to smile and I just want to make sure that when I'm smiling, I'm actually smiling and that's it. So ignore everything else and just focus on relaxing and making sure what you're trying to communicate is actually getting through. So I know that this video has a lot being more informative and not so much practical applications as much as I do want it to be more that way. But for this ones, I just can't really do much. So I'm sorry. But if you have 
any questions or concerns or comments, feel free to leave them below. And yeah, yeah like, comment, subscribe. Yeah, you know, all the standard stuff. So, and that's it. Hope you guys are doing, staying well and safe. And I will talk to you guys next time.